I was really self-conscious about the shape of my boobs. <laughs> I don't know if that's TMI, but I was really self-conscious about the way my boobs are shaped because I feel like my boob shape is not one that is portrayed in like media very much. Hey, hey, hey guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan, And I am super stoked for today's conversation, this being the very first day of Black Breastfeeding week now for those of you guys who don't know or if you are not aware august is the month of breastfeeding awareness month but there is this one week at the end of the month that focuses primarily on black breastfeeding and trust me it is necessary there are so many reasons why this conversation needs to be highlighted maybe you're a mom who's pregnant and you're currently trying to figure out the best ways to prepare yourself for the breastfeeding journey if that is the case you are in the right place because today we are going to be talking about having triple b's and i'm not talking about in size i am talking about balancing boobs babies and business okay because it is a thing and just like the juggle is real the shift is real when i talk about the shift i am talking about the shift that is needed to um really gain a mindset that is conducive to breastfeeding um, and also doing so in a way that promotes joy. I'm gonna share some hacks because when I was on my breastfeeding journey, there were a couple of things that I figured out early in the game that really made for a truly joyful experience as I was nursing both of my children. First, I wanna share a little bit about my experience and breastfeeding for the first time and then for the second time because the experiences were completely different. I was able to breastfeed Aria until she was 11 months uh, straight and then she weaned at about 13 or 14 months and it was wild because I know that some moms have uh, some issues getting their children to wean but it was like she woke up one morning and all of a sudden she didn't want my boobs anymore. And just like that, my tetas were mine again. <laughs> I was no longer a milkmaid and I had my body back. I can't begin to express to you guys the freedom and the liberation that I felt and the enjoyment that I had of my body after completing my breastfeeding journey the first time around. I wanted to do all the things, okay? I was on a sexy bra spree. <laughs> I tossed all my old bras. I brought all the new ones. I was so excited to not have to pack nipple pads. <laughs> I was really stoked about the fact that I wouldn't have to wake up in the morning with an achy chest anymore. And within less than a year, I was back in melon mode when I found out that we were going to be having our second Jace. But what happened during my breastfeeding journey the second time around was something that was really different. It was so weird. I really enjoyed the process the second time around. And I think that what really made the biggest difference for me between the first and the second time was the fact that I embraced my womanhood, I owned the breastfeeding journey, and I also let go of the shame um, or the considerations of other people as I was going through breastfeeding the second time around. I don't know how many of you guys can relate to this, but throughout the first time um, I was breastfeeding with Aria, I would always carry around an extra swaddle or, or a um, shirt or something to cover up her face as I was breastfeeding. And when I thought about this, the consideration wasn't so much for her as much as it was for everyone else to make sure that they felt comfortable. And I, I also found that I would get really embarrassed every time I had to feed her. Like I would excuse myself from conversations. I'd always be left trying to figure out where I was gonna go to pump or where I could go to quietly feed her um, in a way that wouldn't disturb others. But when it came to the second round of breastfeeding with Jace, I let all that go. <laughs> and it really wasn't so much my decision or my choice as, was, as much as it was me paying attention to my child, Jace, and what his likes and dislikes were. I found that really early in my breastfeeding journey with Jace that he hated that stuff. Oh my gosh. He hated the cloth on his face. He would get super hot. He would always be crying. He would get very fussy. He would pull the blanket off and then I'm struggling with him trying to cover his face back up and he's having a fit and then I'm having a fit because I'm getting impatient with him and the whole situation. None of this made for a joyful experience for either one of us. Either one of us. 
he wasn't happy with his eating and I wasn't happy in trying to provide the nutrients for him. And you, if you guys don't know, having uh, stressful environments as you're trying to breastfeed can actually affect your production. There's so many things that can affect how you produce your milk. And so at one point I said, bump it. I'm not doing this anymore. And I freed the boob, okay? I literally freed the nip. I mean, I wasn't going around like putting my, my boobs on display or anything, and I, I definitely wasn't trying to make a show of my nipples. But at the same time, I became very aware of the fact that they're just boobs. <laughs> they're just boobs. If you're a woman, you have them. If you are a man that is with a woman, more than likely you've played with them. And if you are a child or a person that's been born from a woman, at one point you may or may not have experienced breastfeeding for yourself personally it's not that big of a deal when you think about the way we think about our bodies um, and all of the shame that comes with exposing our bodies it's really um, self-created and one part of my breastfeeding journey that I'm really grateful for was the liberation that came with just embracing my womanhood and Breastfeeding the second time around really helped me do that. I was no longer concerned with what other people thought about me and how I was or was not exposing myself because again, it wasn't a matter of trying to put on a show, but I wanted to make sure that my baby was comfortable eating and I wanted to make sure that I was in as relaxed of a state as possible and that I wasn't fighting with him to feed him. And also, when I think a lot about the motherhood journey and engaging with our children, I like to think about it the same way that I would approach or embrace any other interaction with another human being. Do as to others as you would want done unto you. Does that sound right? The same way you'd want to be treated is the same way you should treat other people. Would I want someone tucking me away under a piece of cover or cloth while I was trying to eat? The answer is no. Would I want someone fussing with me or yelling at me as I'm trying to eat my meals? The answer is no. So why would I then push that on my child? It don't make no sense. Another experience that really got me in this mindset of this makes absolutely no sense. If I wouldn't want this for myself, why would I do this for my child? Was an instance where I needed to pump and there was no place to do it. And I ended up almost pumping in the bathroom. That's nasty. The more I thought about it, it just didn't make any sense. At that point, I was like, why would I do this? Why would I take my child <laughs> to nurse them in a bathroom when I myself would not want to eat in a bathroom? I don't know if this is gonna give any of you freedom. I hope that you embrace freeing the nip and freeing your boob in a way that makes you feel comfortable, but also in a way that promotes healthy and happy breastfeeding between you and your child because it really does make a huge difference. Now that I think about it, there's also one other thing that made me really uncomfortable about breastfeeding in public the first time. <laughs> And I feel like I'm a little ashamed to say this, except there is no shame, whatever. I embraced it and my boobs are what they are. But um, I was really self-conscious about the shape of my boobs. <laughs> I don't know if that's TMI, but I was really self-conscious about the way my boobs are shaped because I feel like my boob shape is not one that is portrayed in like media <laughs> very much. And it's weird because it wasn't until I was in my mid to late 20s that I learned that boobs just have different shapes. Like they're all not perky and sitting up like this 24 seven, okay? That just happens to be a type of boob shape. There are some that hang. There are some that move a little bit freer. There are some that are fuller. There are some that allow for a little more cleavage. Cleavage. <laughs> there are some that have a little gap in the middle. Those are mine. Like I have a breastplate that shows. Um, and my boobs are like kind of white set. Right? Like my shoulders are narrow so they sit and Okay, this is definitely TMI. You guys don't need to know all that. But the point of the matter was I was really self-conscious about my boob shape. And so because of this reason, I always felt kind of weird um, having my boobs be seen in some way. But while I was breastfeeding, they got a lot fuller. So maybe at that point I stopped caring because they were fuller. Um, but also, again, more than anything, it was a matter of comfort. But for those of you who may be self-conscious about the shape of your tetas, <laughs> okay if you are self-conscious about your boob shape know that you don't need to be boobs come in all types of shapes and sizes 
love them all. So now that I've given you guys a little insight into my breastfeeding journey, I want to share why it's so important that Breastfeeding Awareness Month actually exists and more importantly why Black Breastfeeding Week exists. And part of the reason why is because there is a huge disparity between black women and black moms who breastfeed and white women who breastfeed. And there's a whole lot that's involved in this. There are a whole lot of statistics that support it. But the point of the matter is black women need more support when it comes to breastfeeding. There's a fundamental difference in the infrastructure that is given to support these women as they go into their breastfeeding journey. Sometimes it starts in the hospitals with just lack of awareness or support or understanding or a teaching um, when it comes to lactation. Sometimes it's just that they're not told about the benefits of breastfeeding. So they may think that it's gross or they're automatically given formula to feed their children. And while I'm saying all of this, please understand that this is not a hit at moms who formula feed their children. Sometimes you may not be able as a mom to produce enough milk for your child. So sometimes formula is needed. And highlighting the difference between um, black breastfeeding moms and those who are non-melanated is that sometimes they just simply lack lack the support or the infrastructure to carry out what is required to breastfeed on a regular basis. Things like having enough maternity leave, things like having the space to feed your children or being able to take the time off so that you can feed your children. Being able to have a job that allows you time for pumping breaks. I know that that is a thing that I experienced as I was transitioning. Another thing is just being able to have support and help as you are breastfeeding because while you're breastfeeding, you are also pumping. There will be some times when you won't necessarily be able to feed your child at every given moment. And sometimes if you're like me, I had an experience where I was producing a lot more milk than um, Aria or Jace could take. So I, I was engorged. At one point, I was producing 16 ounces um, after they'd been fed. And so I would store all of that milk, but it's a lot of work pumping and breastfeeding in itself for the first six months of your child's life can feel like a full-time job because when you're not breastfeeding and you're pumping then you have to wash out the pumping materials you have to then package the milk you have to label the milk you have to make sure that the milk is stored correctly it's a whole thing all right and it's really helpful to have support or have an additional person to help you with your baby in the times when you're going through that but not all women have it i want to share with you guys a fun fact that i found online for a woman making sixty thousand dollars a year pre-tax working 50 hours a week it says that the monetary value of the time spent breastfeeding in the first six months based on the average number and duration of daily feeds is around $14,250, okay? So for all of you moms, okay, who are breastfeeding and all of you who are pumping, I need you to recognize that you are literally creating liquid gold. And I also want you to make sure that those around you, yes, I'm talking about your partners who want to toss the milk after it's been sitting out for a couple hours talking about it's not good, but it is still good if it's still good. If it's not good, then please toss it. Um, they can't be throwing away your liquid gold. Okay, producing breast milk is hard work <laughs> and it is tied to dollars when you consider the amount of time and energy that it takes to do it. All right, now that I've highlighted some of the uh, differences and some of the, I don't wanna say stresses, some of the considerations that are involved in breastfeeding, I wanna share some of the benefits, okay? Because trust me, if you are able to breastfeed, it is definitely worth the effort. There are so many positives that not only benefit your baby, but that also benefit you, believe it or not, as a new mom. The first and probably the most obvious being that breastfeeding is one of the most nutritious things that you can do for your baby. Um, it's natural, it comes from you, um, and what you eat, you pass down to your child. So if it's something where you eat well, your baby is getting all the nutrients. It is literally one of the most nutritious things that you can feed your baby. There's a whole lot of science involved in this. I am not the one to give you all of the scientific facts and details, although they are available for your viewing pleasure. 
in books as well as online. I highly recommend that if you are looking for those details that you do the research. Another thing that benefits you as a mom, trust me ladies, you really wanna listen to this, is the fact that breastfeeding can actually help you with your weight loss post-pregnancy. It is said that if you breastfeed your child, it helps you lose your postpartum weight. Um, this is something that I don't know that I really experienced in uh, depth, <laughs> but I definitely think that it helped maybe with the first 10 pounds coming off or maybe 20 because like, you know, about 10 pounds came from the baby and um, the placenta and all that stuff. But for a little while, I was losing a lot of weight after breastfeeding and then the rest of it was just fat that needed to come off on its own and I had to love my body through that process. But some of my biggest and most favorite considerations for breastfeeding are the fact that one, it saves you time. Oh my gosh, does breastfeeding save you time? Because pumping is not fun. Pumping is not fun. <laughs> I'll say it one more time for the people in the back. Pumping is not fun. Pumping can hurt your nipples <laughs> if you're not doing it correctly. Pumping is time consuming. Pumping keeps you tethered um, to your house. <laughs> um, although they do have some really cool and really cute new breast pumps that are in the market now and I'm really excited about them. Putting together bottles with formula can also be a very time consuming process. Between having to pack a bottle every time you want to go out to going out and getting the formula, uh, making sure that you have all the materials on hand like the formula itself, the water, making sure that you're able to have the time or the environment to warm up the milk after the bottle is made it's just a very time consuming process oh and did i i forgot to mention cleaning the bottles cleaning the bottles is a whole other thing for all that if you could just take your boob out pop your boob out put the baby on it and drain yourself i would i mean to me it just makes sense so i very much enjoyed breastfeeding first and foremost for that reason it saved me time but in addition to this breastfeeding also saves you money okay if you guys do not know formula is expensive towards the end of my breastfeeding journey with aria um she was weaning some and we would give her uh one bottle of formula like every other day just to supplement and i think like formula was like 40 dollars or something it was ridiculous we only brought two canisters and then that was it that we never had to buy formula again and thankfully Jace never had any type of formula he was breastfed all the way through um, until he weaned at 13 months so consider it okay another thing that I didn't know before becoming a mom was that breastfeeding can actually lower the risk of breast cancer ovarian cancer and osteoporosis which is weird because like I feel like the baby's taking from your nutrients, but science says that it lowers the risk of all three of those things. So in addition to this, there's the wonderful added benefit of just being able to cultivate a strong bond with your baby and the wonderful hormones and chemicals that are released as you cuddle with your baby. Chemicals like oxytocin, which is, yes, the same chemical that's released as you orgasm. So like really good feels are being released as you feed your baby. But now that I've spoken about all that, y'all are like, all right, sis, we know. Benefits of breastfeeding, we know. Your journey was awesome. But what are these solutions? What do I have to know? How can I make sure my breastfeeding journey is an awesome one? I got you. It's time for some solutions and breastfeeding hacks. <laughs> One of my biggest solutions to breastfeeding is to get your freedom, okay? Breastfeeding can feel like such a task for most women or for many women, let me not generalize, because a lot of the time you're sitting in the same place to do it. Try to get out and socialize as much as you can. I know that right now during these coronavirus times that may be a little difficult, but even making sure that you're getting outside of the house and walking around a park or taking a walk around the block can be really helpful and just giving you and your baby some fresh air and allowing you to be in some place other than the confines of your house. Another thing that helps you in this journey and supporting you to get out while also breastfeeding is baby wearing. Oh my gosh, I could go on and on and on about the benefits of baby wearing and the blessing of baby wearing, okay? <laughs> baby wearing is that life, okay? Because it gives you the ability to mother hands-free. 
When you're breastfeeding at home and you're holding your baby a lot of times, your arm can get tired and you feel like your hands are always occupied with a tiny person. But the moment you're able to get into baby wearing, you're able to get your hands and your life back <laughs> because you're able to carry your baby or wear your baby in a number of various positions that are really helpful. You can wear them on your front, you can wear them on your hip, you can wear them on your back once they get to a certain size or age. One of the things that I enjoyed most about baby wearing was the fact that I could actually breastfeed on the go. And when I talk about on the go, I mean like on the go. I would be in the grocery store, breastfeeding no one would be the wiser i would be out on walks at the mall breastfeeding no one would be the wiser and it was just a really awesome situation another thing that you can do to make your breastfeeding journey a lot easier and joy filled is to play with positions because there are a couple of ways that you can feed your baby holding the baby simply like this sometimes is not the most comfortable i found that with jace especially at the beginning of my breastfeeding journey with him holding him in the football position was the one that produced the best results for both of us we were both more comfortable and i was able to breastfeed longer other tips that i have for you guys is to to make sure that you pack an extra bib and an extra shirt for your baby and yourself because even though there are no bottles involved the boob can still get a little messy okay and it's really helpful to have a bib in between your boob and your baby's clothes and their mouth to collect any dribble that sometimes comes up or maybe some vomit because it happens or some um, squirts that happen because sometimes that happens too as you're feeding on one boob um, you get let down coming off the other one <laughs> which brings me to another point of um, making sure that if you can you have something else collecting milk that comes from your other boob because sometimes that's the thing as well. When you're starting to breastfeed on one side, the letdown then starts to come out of the other side. And if you don't have anything to collect the milk, you're wasting your liquid gold. That was quick. I didn't think I'd get through the list that quick, but <laughs> that brings me to the last point. The last tip and trick that I wanna share with you guys is to enjoy the process. I mean, I know that that always goes without saying, especially when it comes to me, but the moment you're able to really relax and ease yourself into this journey of breastfeeding, the more enjoyable it will make the process for both you and your baby. And it'll also produce really good hormones, really good feels that will then pass on to your baby because however you feel in the moment can actually be transferred to your baby through your breast milk in the form of chemicals and hormones. So you want to make sure they're the good ones, okay? <laughs> Which brings me to, oh my gosh, I think we're going to make it before my computer dies. Two joy gems. I looked for a couple of joy gems as it related to breastfeeding in the Bible. And there were a couple, but basically every time breastfeeding is mentioned in the Bible, it talks about the nurturing and the gentleness of the mother and her child. Or like the blessing of being able to... Uh, collect from an area in a blessed way um, so when I think of motherhood and the breastfeeding journey it really is one of patience love and gentleness and really just enjoying the process the moment you're able to do this you are able to embrace the journey in a way that allows for more freedom and joy as you breastfeed <sighs> and trust me sooner or later you will have your body back I believe in you mamas. But just so we wrap this up with an actual scripture, there is Genesis 49:25 and it says because of your father's because of your father's God who helps you, because of the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of the skies above, blessings of the deep springs below, blessings of the breast and womb. To be able to nurse, to be able to nurture from the bosom is a blessing. Ah so good. With that being said, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that it's been beneficial to you. If you like this video or this episode, if you're listening on a streaming platform, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're a new mom who finds yourself overwhelmed, overworked, or simply over it, whether you are a entrepreneur or you're a stay-at-home mom, or you're just a mother who's trying to figure out how to navigate your way through this journey called life, head on over to my site, ericalassan.com, and there you'll be able to find a number of resources to help you feel less overwhelmed and managing your overworked situation with a little more joy while also help you just generally find more joy purpose and healing and what's next y'all probably thought i was done apparently so did i 
but I was thinking of one very obvious solution to this whole breastfeeding journey and making sure that you're anchoring in your joy. I've said it before, but I will say it time and time again because some of y'all mamas need to hear it, but ask for help. Ask for help during this breastfeeding process whenever and wherever you need it. And I'm telling you some of the most seemingly menial, minimal things will make the biggest difference in helping you just have a couple more minutes to yourself to enjoy your body without having the baby on you. So whether asking for help looks like asking your partner um, or spouse or whoever is coming to visit, a friend or a family member that may be visiting to hold your baby every once in a while or to help you wash out the bottle so that you aren't the one that's constantly doing it, um, to dry the bottles, to put the bottles away, or even having them help you prepare a meal so you can eat and create more nutrition for your baby. All of these things are really little things that go a very long way. I hope that these tips help you and your breastfeeding journey with joy.